So even if you know nothing of Japanese culture, I'm sure you've heard of sushi. For non-Japanese people, you either love it or you hate it. There never seems to be an in-between. So imagine your family owns a small sushi restaurant. Growing up, you help out there and maybe could run the business one day. However, you don't like raw fish. To make matters worse, you're allergic to shrimp and crab, supposedly can't even touch the stuff. Well, that's okay, you'll become a comedian. Ah, but apparently you're not skilled enough? So you turn back to your original dream, become a race car driver, a very probable and realistic career choice. And if it doesn't work out, you'll end up back in the restaurant, unable to touch half the ingredients. This was the reality for young Kamui Kobayashi. Kamui Kobayashi was born the 13th of September 1986. Oh, and this is a figure of him. Brief aside, but during his career, one of his sponsors has been the Good Smile Company. You may have heard of Good Smile Racing Team, whom participates in Super GT and have even sponsored some cycling. But primarily, Good Smile does its business in figurines. They make figures of anime characters, music icons, and pop culture figures. However, one of their first 1 8 scale male figures was of Kamui. Fellow figure company Max Factory also made a posable figure with a helmet, and here it is disassembled. Terrifying. Back on track, Kamui was born in Amagasaki, Hyogo, Japan. It's an old city home to the beautiful Amagasaki Castle, but today it's mostly an industrial city. Kamui was born here, grew up here, and his family's restaurant is here. His family largely stays private. For a lot of his early career, Kamui spent large amounts of time away from his family, which he says isn't that unusual for Japanese children. However, he always knew he had their love and support. Neither of his parents had an interest in motorsports, but his father still served as his cart mechanic in the beginning. By choice, his father never even owned a car, and a story says when Kamui bought a car around age 18, he came home and found his father had sold it. His father was an interesting man. He graduated from an art college, but after became a sushi chef, opening up Ebisuya. Self-proclaimed, he described himself as an okasafua, which means land surfer. Essentially someone who dresses with the cool laid-back style of a surfer, but doesn't actually surf. Unfortunately, when he passed away in 2021, Kamui spoke of his father saying while there were moments of disagreements, he always knew his father cared and thought about him. His father would often form cheering parties in the community to watch and cheer on his son. Kamui was born the second of his parents' two sons and younger daughter. Harking back to his father's quirkiness, his brother was named Hokuto after the manga Fist of the North Star, and Kamui was named after the series Kamui Den. The kanji his parents used to write his name also have the meaning enabling great dreams. Kamui's great dreams first began as a young child after seeing some NASCAR and Japanese racing series on television, where he wanted to drive the car. His father told him he was far too young, but a few years later, almost age 9, he saw another program showing children younger than him racing go-karts. Again, he told his father, and he was excited when his dad agreed to take him to an indoor kart facility the next day. The young boy enjoyed karting instantly and wanted to do it as much as he could. His family didn't know anything about motorsports, but wanted to support their son. Over the next few years, he would do events close to home with his father acting as his mechanic. At the time, Kamui didn't have anyone he wanted to be like. He didn't know motorsports. He didn't even know Formula 1 existed yet. He just focused on winning his next race. In his first year, he'd finished third in the 1996 Takaro Tezuka tournament. He mostly raced locally, but would venture farther from home for bigger events. And in the following year, he would win the All Japan Tournament. It also attracted the attention of the Yamaha kart team, which at age 11 started supplying him with engines. Being a Yamaha team driver meant he was often away from home traveling with the team. In 98, he'd win the Cadet Cup West Championship, 99 the D-Class All Japan Tournament, in 2000 the All Japan Junior Kart and Suzuka Kart Championships, and in 01 he'd be second in the ICA Asia Pacific Kart Series and ICA All Japan Champion. Over this time, Kamui developed his dream of becoming a Formula 1 driver, however, he still knew how unrealistic that was. His city of Amagasaki had a thriving comedy scene, so he tried to change his dream into becoming a comedian, but decided he wasn't talented enough. He helped in his family's restaurant and figured if racing didn't work, he could work there. Fortunately, his success in karting and association with Yamaha led him to the Toyota Racing School. At age 14, Kamui passed the ESSO Formula Toyota Racing School audition. Toyota was so impressed that they wanted to sign him to a 10-year contract. 
Honda had also wanted Kamui to attend their racing school at Suzuka. Both Honda and Kamui were happy to do both schools, but Toyota wanted exclusive operational control. At the time, Toyota was more successful in F1, and Kobayashi decided he would probably have more career opportunities with Toyota. However, due to Japanese national law, drivers were unable to participate in car racing below the age of 18. While below age, Kamui finished his 2001 karting, and in 2002 did three rounds of the European Karting Championship. With a brand new team and only three rounds, he had already secured a pole. He believed he was quite good in a kart, so he was surprised at the end of the year when he hopped into a formula car. The Japanese Motor Racing Federation had made a special deal with the government allowing 16-year-olds to race, and Kamui was the second to receive this special permission. In karts, he was successful without thinking about it, but in his first car experience in Hokkaido, he found the extra weight of the car meant he had to redevelop how he approached driving. He participated in one of the final rounds of that year's Formula Toyota series, and in 2003 he would compete in full. He would get four poles, five podiums, and two victories. He'd be leading the championship into the final race. However, in that race, he'd blow up his engine and finish second to Kazuki Nakajima. When the series ended, Toyota sent some drivers to the European Toyota Racing School in Vicenza, Italy. Kamui says arriving in Europe was a lot of fun. Of course, everything was different, but it was interesting and he was living a dream. He had the opportunity to race in the Formula Renault Italia series, but he needed to learn English. He found it frustrating to be doing well on track, but being held back by language. 20 years ago, English wasn't as widely taught in Japan, so Kamui had to invest hours in study to keep his racing dreams alive. Paired with the Prima team in his first year, Kamui would finish a 2004 Italian Formula Renault Series 7th with 3 poles, 3 podiums, and 2 wins. The next year, he would win the championship with 9 poles, 11 podiums, and 6 wins. He'd also win the Formula Renault Euro Cup, becoming only the second driver at the time to win both in the same year. In 2006, he would move up to Formula 3 with the ASM Formula team. He'd have strong teammates, Guido van der Gaard, Paul de Resta, and Sebastian Vettel. They were tough, but good ways to measure his own performance. His first year highlights would include pole at the Macau Grand Prix, three podiums in the Euro Series, and best rookie honors. At the end of the year, Kobayashi would take part in winter testing with the Panasonic Toyota F1 team. In his second year of F3, he'd be on the podium in a third of the races, get a pole, and get his first victory at Magni Corps, finishing the year fourth overall. 2008 would see Kamui moving to Paris and joining the Dam's GP2 team. He'd complete 9 of the 10 GP2 Asia events, getting 3 podiums and 2 victories. In Europe, he'd win the second round of the season at Catalonia after starting on pole. However, the rest of the year would be plagued with DNFs and only one more points finish, ending 16th overall. For 2009, he would assume official third driver duties for the Toyota F1 team and continue his GP2 campaign. He'd win the GP2 Asia Championship and in Europe would see less retirements, more points finishes, but only one podium finishing 16th in points again. The Toyota Formula 1 team had always wanted a Japanese driver. In practice for the 2009 Suzuka GP, regular driver Timo Glock had been advised to not participate due to fever, and Kobayashi was called into action. Kamui was nervous. He hadn't driven the car in seven months. He had little experience on the big track at Suzuka, and it was wet. But the session went without incident, and Timo would be back for Saturday. However, in qualifying, Timo would crash heavily at the final corner, injuring his leg. Toyota petitioned the FIA to allow Kamui to race the car, but because he did not do the Saturday sessions, the FIA did not allow him to enter. The team expected Glock to be ready for Brazil two weeks later, but further medical inspection found he had cracked a vertebra. Kamui was still in Japan when he received the call from the team on Tuesday. He had never driven at Sao Paulo, so he hopped on a plane and watched videos on YouTube to learn as much as he could. He was also worried about the state of his physical fitness for a whole race weekend. Come qualifying, Kamui would just miss Q3 and start 11th. Once underway, he says his neck was done by about lap 3, but he put on a solid performance finishing on the lead lap just outside the points in 9th. He received some criticisms for his defense on Jensen Button, who was fighting for the championship. But he says he didn't care then, and he doesn't care now either. He was fighting for a career, Jensen already had one. However, his defensive driving did also lead to contact between him and former rival Kazuki Nakajima, with Kazuki ending in the wall. Two weeks later, Timo was still incapacitated, so Kobayashi would be filling in at Abu Dhabi. Again, he just missed Q3 qualifying 12th, 
but once the race started, his performance on the harder tire was fantastic. By the end of the first stint, his engineer told him they were fighting for a podium. Kamui remembers jokingly thinking, wow, this is quite easy. However, once he went on the softer tire compound, he began to struggle. Still, he finished ahead of teammate Yarno Truly, scoring points in 6th. Things were looking positive for Kamui. Heading into 2010, there were rumors that Toyota were leaving F1, but nothing had been officially announced to the team, so Kamui figured, worst case, they would have one more year. In late December, he was called to a meeting at Toyota HQ in Germany. He figured it was announcing him as a driver, so he was shocked when they revealed they would be ending their participation in F1. Kamui knows the technology the team had planned for 2010. One of the strongest engines, improved aero, blown diffuser, better air ducts, the list goes on. Looking back on it, he believes they could have won, but pulling out saved a lot of money, so it was probably the right choice. Shocked, Kobayashi returned to Paris. He had no big sponsors. He didn't have the money to return to GP2. He loved Paris, but with no expectations of Formula 1, he started packing his bags to go home and work in the sushi restaurant. Within the week, he received a call from Peter Sauber. Due to the global financial crisis, BMW was leaving F1 as well, and Peter was looking to rebuild his team the way he wanted it. He called Kamui to a meeting and immediately signed him to a two-year contract with option for a third. Season 1 started a bit rough, five retirements in the first six races, but over the year he would score 32 points and have a better average finish than both of his teammates. He also gained a reputation for impressive overtakes, being one of the latest drivers on the brakes. Season 2 started well with Kamui and new teammate Sergio Perez finishing the Australian GP in 8th and 7th, but were then disqualified over rear wing legality. The whole year would be more consistent, only 3 DNFs and 9 points finishes, but only 30 points, ending 12th in driver standings. Kamui would return to Sauber for a third year, and it would be the most competitive of his F1 career. 6th in Australia, 5th in Spain, 4th in Germany, qualified 2nd at Spa, and finally at home in Suzuka, would get a podium. Coming into that race, he says there was no extra pressure, because you should always aim to do your best, but he knew if something good happened, it would be special. They're chanting for their hero to come out onto the podium and see them. Unfortunately, Sauber was struggling financially, and by this time he pretty much knew he wasn't coming back the next year, but that didn't stop him from trying to show his best to other teams. Even in the last race at Brazil, in mixed conditions, near the podium, Kamui tried to get in front of Fernando Alonso, who was fighting for the championship. Sauber got engines from Ferrari, so Ferrari team principal Stefano Domenicali sent Monisha Kaltenborn an angry message. Kamui was getting involved where he shouldn't be, but again, Kamui was fighting for a career. Ironically, in 2013, Kamui found himself joining the Ferrari AF Corsa GT program. During the year, he and teammates Tony Vlander and Olivier Beretta would finish 5th at Le Mans, get 4 podiums, and finish 7th in the World Endurance Championship. The only association he had with F1 was when he got the chance to drive a 2010 Ferrari at a promotional event in Moscow in the wet, where he would crash. Heading into 2014, he received an offer from Ferrari to become a bigger part of the GT program, but realistically, there was no way back to F1. Alternatively, when he left the sport back in 2012, he had created a fan donation website called Support Kamui, trying to raise funds to help him get back on the grid. With his donations, Kamui went to the Caterham F1 team, saying he would also race without any pay. He said he didn't care about money. He wanted to be successful and happy in life, and money was not a part of that. If he had an opportunity to be a Formula 1 driver, he could not betray the dreams of his childhood over money. He knew the Caterham was not a fast car, but he bet on himself. If he could deliver some standout performances, maybe another team would take notice. Unfortunately, the team had a lot of issues, and halfway through the year, owner Tony Fernandez sold the team to a consortium of Swiss and Middle Eastern investors. The new owners wanted to replace management, staff, and ultimately the drivers. Wednesday before Spa, they replaced Kamui with Andre Lauderer, who brought money from Hype Energy Dreams. The next week at Monza, there was a plan to run Roberto Mary in practice to help him get super license points, and then Andre in the race. Lauderer refused to race if he missed practice time, so the team pulled Kamui out of the simulator to fill the seat. Kobayashi was unhappy being tugged around, but he had a contract, so he did what he had to do. 
Then the team made a surprise announcement to bring Rubens Barrichello back to replace Kamui in the last three races of the year. However, the struggling team wouldn't last that long and entered administration, missing two of the final three races. In Abu Dhabi, Kamui would drive, qualify 17th, and then be forced to retire the car on lap 42, finally being freed from the team, but also ending his Formula 1 career. Since 2015, Kamui has participated in the Japanese Super Formula Series at least partly every year. In 2016, he renewed his relation with Toyota, joining the World Endurance Championship with Toyota Gazoo Racing. He's seen great success in the WEC, winning the championship in both 2020 and 21. He's finished second at Le Mans four times and finally won it in 2021. He's participated in DTM, Formula E, Super GT, won the 24 Hours of Daytona twice, and as of last year was named the team principal of the Toyota's WEC program. After rejoining Toyota, the team had a public appearance at the Tokyo Center in Japan. Company president Akio Toyota came and met Kamui, apologizing for what had happened in 2010. Due to the financial status of the company, he was under pressure to cancel the Toyota Formula One team. He had a responsibility to the company, but he also had one to the drivers, and he felt bad for leaving them without a team. Since then, Kamui and Akio have become good friends. Akio believes it is better to have a Japanese person successfully representing their country on a global stage, more so than being stuck to a singular brand, and that is why Kamui has been able to race so many different cars. He has also been helping to guide the direction of the company in the development of hydrogen powered cars in both road and sport. So when it comes to what is next for Kamui Kobayashi, well, in an interview from June 2022 on the Motorsport Magazine podcast, Kamui expressed interest in doing more series in the United States but not IndyCar, because he says it's too similar to Super Formula. He would awfully like to try NASCAR. Hello everyone, and thank you greatly for watching my video. But going forward, I'm also hoping to start making some YouTube shorts which feature interesting facts and stories from these videos, some of which didn't make the final cut, to be digestible in under a minute. So if that sounds interesting, please do consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. Then, in this video, it was revealed that Kamui was raised in the Toyota family and found his way back, taking a very influential role. My next driver, however, has not always been associated with Toyota, but out of all drivers representing the brand, he is both directly and indirectly responsible for the most victories and championships. I'd give you the statistics, but I think that would make it too obvious. So, if you have any ideas, let me know, and I'll see you next time on Driver Profiles.